Welcome to my favorite time of the year. Fall is by far my favorite season. It always has been. I had a special moment with spring this last year. I'm saying it's got to be probably second now, but there is just something so hopeful and exciting about fall and just everything that comes with this season and what's ahead. And there's just no better way to start a fall morning than a lovely latte. I love the process of making lattes. They are not ridiculously practical with small children, but <laughs> I probably nine times out of 10 make a few moments to set aside to be able to have my coffee experience. I make my coffee uh, with how, my, how many ever shots of espresso is that? <laughs> I don't know, I just fill it to a line. <laughs> I don't know any technical terminology, just know what I like. So I fill that and then I add some maple syrup and cream to my little frother there. I, I go back and forth. We um, have raw milk, but it doesn't always have a huge line of cream and sometimes well, more times than not, we've already shaken the container, so there's no cream at the top. So I just did some half and half that I get at Aldi. And it hits the spot. Another exciting time of fall is being able to do my morning chicken chores with a little crisp air. Just exciting and a little bit more enjoyable. I love these chickens. I could sit and watch chickens for hours. In the South, these early days of fall are really only enjoyable <laughs> in the morning hours. We tend to feel a little bit like summer come afternoon. So I try to just take some time to enjoy our yard and keep up with things a little cleaning up and watering the flowers and just embracing everything about the quiet mornings before my kiddos are up and walking around being crazy so just appreciating the individual moments one little pepper plant left from our little raised bed garden and he's just hanging in there strong I keep thinking okay it's probably time to get rid of him but little new pop peppers keep popping up so we're just letting him hang in there as long as possible and my marigolds are doing great I've so enjoyed having marigolds this year so our first little fall inspired meal I had this huge butternut squash <laughs> that I'm manhandling, as you can see. There is really no graceful way to cut a butternut squash, so I will spare you the rest of that. And I'm just scooping out these squash seeds. Ended up just giving these to the chickens. We actually used the pumpkin seeds for uh, for roasting what well, we have since this video and I burnt half of them but the other half was tasty and <laughs> next time I'll probably save the butternut squash seeds for us because they were super fun to soak and then roast up for us for a fun little crunchy snack but I'm just prepping this butternut squash get some olive oil on there and some seasoning just some salt and pepper just the basics I'm getting this going kind of early in the afternoon. This just does take a while to cook. That's something with fall cooking and a lot of different squash recipes. You really just have to think ahead to roast them and then the actual 
squash dinner comes together quite quickly and easily, but getting that squash cooking in advance is very crucial to dinner time success. So I did that and then just getting a little bit of butter going in the pan, sauteing up some yummy veggies. Any dinner that begins with fresh garlic and colorful onions, and nice melted butter is a cozy meal to me. And it's how most of our meals begin. I, a lot of times, will just begin this before I really even know what we're making for dinner because we use it so much in so many of our meals. I'm just getting those cozy ingredients sauteing together and getting some bacon started. I'll be chopping up some bacon. I love using bacon for when we need a quick protein and just don't want to spend a lot of time working on that protein. I love using it in the oven, utilizing the oven for it. I do a sheet pan with some parchment paper and then lay the bacon on top. I put it in an oven 400 degrees and just let it go till it looks good. And usually it's about 15 to 20 minutes. We like our bacon fairly crispy. I decided to go ahead and get a little bit of a sauce going. So all that melted butter has softened the onions and I'm just getting some flour in there. Just breaking it up, let it saute a minute, and then I start adding my bone broth in. Just taking the time in between to make sure that flour is cooking through and breaking up, and just starting to make more of a sauce. My butternut squash is looking pretty good now, so I'm just gonna let that cool, because I do wanna cut it, so it takes a little bit to cool. I've got enough chicken broth in there to break everything up and it's a loose sauce now. I'm just going to season it. Always salt and pepper. That's half and half there. I wanted more of a creamy base. We'll be having, adding some cheese. So, I don't know what's cozier than cheese. <laughs> so, we add that to this dish. We're going to be making basically a pasta skillet type dish. So, get that sauce all creamy. We're going to season it with some rubbed sage. I didn't, I wanted just regular ground sage, but couldn't find any. So, rubbed sage it is. And garlic powder. I guess I add garlic powder to everything. And some onion powder, I believe. Pepper, salt, and some basil, all the usual suspects. There's something about fall that just makes being in the kitchen more enjoyable. I think some of it's the cooler weather and not being so hot in my kitchen while I'm cooking, but I just enjoy taking a little bit more time in the kitchen during the fall. I think just the different elements of fall and the things that are in season take a little extra time to prepare and think ahead and dice more and more squash and just all of the aspects of fall in the kitchen are just enjoyable to me. I feel like there's a lot of color still because I think you think of summer as being where all the color is, but I mean, how beautiful is squash and that bacon? Can I mean, can it get any more attractive? <laughs> so I just think there's things about it that you can really enjoy even if you're not getting to be outside and just flavors that are so warming to the soul and to the palate. 
I try my hardest to clean up as I go. This has never come easy for me. <laughs> and I have just really seen that there's such a difference in the evening when I'm able to clean as I go and just kind of clean up the majority of the mess. And so we're, we only have a few little dinner dishes afterwards and we can enjoy each other. And my daughter's now helping me, so <laughs> that's helpful. You can see the camera is moving <laughs> because she was helping with the shots as well. So I just got some of our favorite pasta going and got that boiled and I'm adding in the bacon. I sauteed the butternut squash just a little bit just to kind of get a little bit of a sear on there. I didn't end up doing much to be honest so I could have, <laughs> could have completely cut that part out. It just ended up being an added step. So I decided to add some peas in for some color, some extra nutrition and protein. Just get another veggie in there because why not? And just stirred those up and I already had our sauce into the side that I had made earlier. So this was actually a really relaxing meal to make. I was able to make the individual ingredients and kind of let them just wait on each other. And it came together really easily and everything was hot and ready to eat when we needed it to be. And I just served this up and everyone enjoyed. Anytime I can make pasta for the kids, that's always gonna be a winner. So I had a little craft planned. You can see these are my pillows. Um, I, I milked it till Labor Day. So anyway, these are decent little pillows. They don't have an insert. They're only a liner with polyfill. Not the best, but that's okay. We're gonna keep it as is. And I'm just going to cover these up. This is my very special professional sewing setup. <laughs> but I am thankful for it. I have a little helper down there. She likes following me everywhere we go. So I am grateful for this setup because this is the first house we've had to where I could actually set up a sewing machine and leave it set up. So it's a huge blessing. It's a little tight and cramped in there, but it works. It has definitely allowed me to do a lot more sewing projects and I've found a little bit of a love for sewing. I don't know anything too much about it that I haven't just learned by doing because it just takes a little bit of the fun out of it if I have to learn it the right way. <laughs> I'd much rather just get into it, make a few mistakes, and you know, just have fun with it. Enjoy it. I learn more each time and I had never actually made pillowcases before, which is kind of surprising because I've made a few dresses now <laughs> and still hadn't made any pillowcases but I really wanted some larger fall pillows. I have small ones that you'll see in a little bit, but I didn't have any fall pillows. I really just didn't want to go out trying to find a certain pattern because I just wanted something fairly simple to go behind the smaller pillows and already had the pillows that I could cover. So instead of, you know, purchasing something else on Amazon. I thought we would make a little trip to Hobby Lobby and we found some discounted fabric. That's the cream that I'm going to use on the back of the pillows. It was on a steep discount because it was kind of an awkward small amount of fabric but it was just perfect. I had like almost no fabric left over but it was perfect for the back. And then the fall pattern with the orange on the front there, the rest orange or whatever, uh, it was a 40% off. So the whole little project didn't cost that much at all. It cost less than probably one pillow cover would have cost on Amazon. So it was a win. I got to use my hands, enjoy the process and I just loved it. 
it worked out really well. And here we are. I've got a little envelope type situation in the back there because I haven't attempted zippers yet. <laughs> and you know, it actually fit. I'm, I'm a little surprised here. You'll see. <laughs> it's a pleasant surprise. So I love it. It worked out good. Tonight we are manhandling a pumpkin. <laughs> I decided that it would just be a lot of fun to make a pumpkin pie. We had several pumpkins that the kids had painted. We actually put them outside on the porch and wasn't even thinking about the fact that we used washable paint. So <laughs> these pumpkins that they painted after a big rain the other day now just look like pumpkins again. So <laughs> if you're wanting to allow your kids to paint a pumpkin over and over and not keep having to buy pumpkins, just set them out in the rain and they can start over. <laughs> Or you could probably just hose them down, I guess. <laughs> but we got the cut in half and just got that ready for roasting. I had no idea how long it would take, but I was figuring around an hour and that's what it ended up being. So I just had it for like 400 and I decided to get some acorn squash going. I have decided acorn squash are my absolute favorite in the squash family. They are just delicious, so sweet, and the easiest to me to roast. I love that the skin gets soft enough on the outside where you can basically eat it if you want to. And it was just the perfect little dish for our meal tonight. So we are just going squash crazy for the fall season. I was just fitting all these in there. I figured while I was doing the pumpkin, going to be doing the acorn squash as well. So this actually ended up being a fairly simple dinner as well. I just wanted to do a filling for these, so I got those in there together. I the pumpkin would just be going while the acorn was, and the acorn would be done a lot quicker. So I'm just getting some potatoes washed up. I wanted to just do some little potato fries, baked potato fries, to put alongside it. Figured, you know, if you're doing one starch, why not do another? <laughs> Maybe not the best choice, but we enjoyed it. It was delightful. Kind of a fun little fun little family meal for the kids because they were all excited about the pumpkin pie and then fries. We make those on a pretty regular basis, but we, we continue to enjoy them. We bake them in lard and it just gives it the best flavor and crispiness. They're just very enjoyable. So who else has friends that gift them meat? <laughs> because it's so cool. It's like the best gift ever. I, my friend recently told me she was moving and she had a large amount of meat from her parents' farm that she couldn't really transport. It was not gonna be a good situation as far as storing it. And she needed to give it to someone before it went bad and she thought of us, so it was so exciting. I got to use some different cuts that I don't normally have. And one of those was this sausage, um, a sausage link. So I just, I removed it from the link and decided it would be perfect in the acorn squash. So I did a lot of similar spices um, and herbs and everything in this dish that I did with the other squash dish. I don't know, they just kind of blend together well, I feel like. So I did the sage and onion powder, garlic powder, and just combined all those and I'm letting everything sear together. We had the onions going in there, beard mushrooms would be a good little protein to add in, and 
we just we've gotten a mutt and a mushroom kick i used to hate mushrooms as a kid and i think honestly i didn't see the appeal at all because i had had canned mushrooms <laughs> and my mom didn't like mushrooms so she hardly ever cooked them but they are so good for you and so I've tried to incorporate them a lot more in our dishes and get my kids liking mushrooms young. <laughs> and it's worked, it's been great, it's a great filler and I think if you cook them and season it quite a bit, you really don't even notice them. So, kind of an easy veggie to sneak in there if you have kids. I added some half and half there. I'm wanting to make this creamy but not like a thick, more of a thick base, I guess, than like a saucy, liquidy type base. I wanted to just be able to make a creamy, meaty, cheesy type filling. <laughs> so I had some cream cheese that I was going to add in, some of our cheddar again, and just let that do its magic. Magic it did. So the sauce is a little thinner, but I knew I was going to have it cool a little bit before putting it in the acorn squash, so it thickened up perfectly. These took about 30 minutes, I would say, and they were fork tender. They were great, so they were just fine um, and ready to go. And I knew I was going to pop them in the oven for another minute anyway to melt the cheese. So I just started dishing up some of this filling inside. And then I was going to layer the cheese on top, more cheese on top, and it melted so nicely. Having them in a glass dish like this was very helpful for having a filling to where you wouldn't have to cut a flat spot on the bottom and allow them to kind of stay up and support one another. Uh, if you had more than than the three or four butternut squash like I did, I guess you'd have to change that up or use multiple dishes, but I just had everything cycling around in the oven as you see, so that worked out perfectly. And this was the pumpkin all softened. I think there's other ways of doing this. I believe you can boil a pumpkin and such, but I just wanted to kind of hang with just doing the oven thing since I was roasting so many other things. So I just started by scooping all of this innards <laughs> out. <laughs> Very technical term for you there. And got the uh, seeds separated. Throwing those acorn squash in to melt the cheese. The potatoes are almost done. I love when everything is ready at the same time. I feel like it rarely happens <laughs> because I'm still mastering the art of everything being warm at the same time. But when it happens, it's a special thing. I'm just using my Vitamix here to puree, the, puree this up really smooth. You could also use a food processor or even an immersion blender, whatever you have. And it made it incredibly smooth and silky. It was, to me, the perfect consistency. It's not as thick as canned pumpkin and not as dark, but it cooked up really well. I was a little concerned about maybe it being too wet. I don't know. I had never made a pumpkin pie from scratch before, so I didn't know what to expect, but I used a recipe from Farmhouse on Boone. I, anytime I do use a recipe, it's usually from Farmhouse on Boone because Lisa just knows everything. And because I don't follow a lot of recipes, when I do, I want it to turn out right and hers always have for me. So I used her pumpkin pie recipe and it was the perfect amount of spice. I loved it. The kids loved it. My husband, he didn't even try any because he doesn't like pumpkin pie. But we finished the thing, so it was not an issue to get rid of it. 
and I just went by her recipe and it was great and I actually used her recipe for a pie crust as well. We had made a pie not long ago, I had beef pie and so I had some pie crust left over and I was so hopeful that I would have enough and I totally did. It was perfect. So the pie crust that I made, it's one, or not one serving, but like one recipe. And I had enough for a top and bottom of a beef pot pie, and then enough for the pumpkin pie. So those acorn squash came out. They look delicious and they are delicious. We definitely enjoyed those. Felt very luxurious, <laughs> our meal did. <laughs> So definitely the perfect way to welcome fall. She just melted gloriously. I'm thinking with all this pie making that I've been doing, I'm going to need to invest in a larger wooden rolling pin <laughs> because this pie crust is still pretty cold and it was a little bit of a chore to get it to roll out with this tiny little thing. But, oh, I've tried so hard not to get a bunch of gadgets in my kitchen. And so I tend to work with things that don't really work that well just to make sure I really need it before I get it. <laughs> So I could totally just keep using this, but I think I'll be on the lookout for maybe one at a thrift store. I would love to get something, um, I don't know, that just has a little bit of character instead of just another regular rolling pin. <laughs> I will definitely have some aluminum foil on hand next time I make a pie though, because my crust did burn. <laughs> so it's not anything special to look at, but it still tasted delicious. So I hope you have enjoyed embracing fall with me today and just throughout our week this week. It was so fun doing all of these seasonal appropriate things. And I hope you'll join me next time. We're going to be making some snacks from scratch.